So it was 5 a.m. 24th of February. I woke up from the uh, loud noises, bangs. You know, it's special sound, never heard it before. And I immediately understood that this is it. The war has started. So I took my phone and uh, yeah, I got proof by the official channels that this is our air defense is actually shooting down the rocket. We packed anything that was most valuable. The only crypto bit which I thought of is my cold wallet. That's it. To be honest, I didn't care about the business at that time. You know, when you hear loud explosions outside and your windows are shaking and your kid is asking your dad what the hell is going on and your wife is asking you what we should do, the last thing you're thinking about is crypto, trust me. We took off five cars to the western part of Ukraine, closer to the border. On 25th, 36 hours after we uh, left home and arrived to the first safe location, you know, I was planning for something bad to happen. I spoke to my team who were with me and we decided that it's a good idea to launch the crypto fund. We already had the um, donation platform integrated into my exchange. So we just started the page and I announced this on my Telegram. A couple of hours later, I received a call from the uh, Minister of Digital Transformation. So he said, listen, we want to do the uh, crypto fund for the country. I saw that you did your fund help us, you know, launch it as fast as possible. So we did that. That's how it started. I know the minister, I know the ministry because we spent the last three years now drafting the law for the virtual assets. So obviously there was a bit of trust and uh, understanding that no one is going to leave anywhere with this money. There is already statistics coming from the Ministry of Digital Transformation. You can Google it, it's on Twitter. So the numbers are 303 Bitcoins, 7,926 Ether, one and a half million of USDT on Tron network. So altogether, it's close to 51 million. I'm really grateful for the crypto community that they're doing this. I can say that it's all humanitarian stuff, like for example, the most important stuff was bulletproof vest, the helmets, first aid kit, blood stopping patches, a lot of food rationing for the soldiers, like the packaged one for the military, something like 400 tons, crazy amounts. Mariupol, we fed people there until we could until there was the internet connection and banking system was working there. We were feeding people in Kiev, in Kharkiv, in Sumy, in Chernigiv. We see now that centralized systems are dead. I mean, they are losing to decentralized one. Putin is a perfect example of 100% centralized regime managed by one person. And Ukraine at the moment, and the reason why we survived is because we're so decentralized. There is no like one central government authority that decides on everything. That's why it's impossible to destroy us. We are showing the world that it could be different, that we can uh, rebuild Ukraine and we're gonna create the first crypto country in the world.